sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son, and believeth on him, may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. But wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Heavy rains have caused flash floods in western Afghanistan, killing at least 35 people. The floods destroyed homes, farmland, bridges and highways. They also swept through makeshift shelters that housed displaced families. Some residents called it the worst storm in 20 years. Hundreds of thousands of people are displaced in the west of the country because of last year's severe drought. Floods in early March caused further destruction and put this year's wheat harvest at risk. In South Korea, where the government has declared a rare national emergency after a giant forest fire swept across the country's northeast, leaving at least one person dead and dozens wounded. The fire broke out late Thursday in the town of Gaeson near the DPRK border. Thousands of firefighters and soldiers have been deployed to contain the flames. The inferno has forced more than 4,000 people to flee their homes. President Moon Jae-in has told officials to take all necessary measures to extinguish the blaze and to cooperate with DPRK authorities if it approaches the border. Tonight, that deadly storm system on the move, leaving a trail of destruction across the south, killing at least eight and injuring dozens. In Texas, a powerful EF3 tornado with 140 mile per hour winds in Franklin, leveling homes, others shredded with debris scattered everywhere. The violent winds flipping over cars and toppling trees, leaving thousands without power. In Cherokee County, people seeing ruins where their homes once stood, 
we were in Alta, a town hit by two powerful tornadoes in 90 minutes as residents came back to their neighborhoods trying to make sense of the unrecognizable. Hail of pretty significant size covers the ground here in Allen tonight. Homeowners showing us the damage it did. In Plano, sirens signaled the storm coming in. First, you'll hear like a little hail, but it's it just it just gotten worse. EJ Delore says at her McKenney home, the hail started at 6:15 and lasted just 15 minutes, but left behind this destruction. Windows in her car and kitchen shattered. It's just so horrible. The hail is getting bigger and bigger, and that's when we saw it, it just gotten really big. Over in Frisco and Allen, same story. Derek Vett shooting this video as the hailstorm moved through. I no way would have thought this would have happened. And uh, then my dog ran out in the middle of it, but got him back. But uh, fortunately, everyone seems to be safe. Trapped inside as the skies open. Drivers pull over in wild weather, too dangerous to keep driving as a huge storm lashes the city. The supercell rolled in during the late afternoon, bringing with it heavy rain, gusty winds and damaging hail. The storm was expected, but forecasters warned it would be unpredictable. Guys, this storm came out of nowhere. Look at all these cars. Oh, man. The worst of the rain hit at Monavale, with 40 millimetres falling in an hour. In the west, at Oran Park, backyards turned white as huge hailstones pelted the ground. Parkling markets resembled snowfields as melting hail turned to slush. Lightning lit up skies above the city as thunder boomed across the suburbs. There's something fishy going on at Wascana Lake, and it's not just the seagulls who are noticing. This is my first day walking around the, the lake, so I thought I'd come through, and I wasn't expecting this at all. Hundreds of dead fish line the shores, even more piling up under bridges, and some can be found in the most unlikely of places. I don't know how that got there, if a bird dropped it or... <laughs> While warmer temperatures, longer daylight hours, and budding leaves are all signs of spring, apparently so is this. We do have dead fish every year. Uh, this year's a little higher than average just with uh, the cold winter we have. It's a phenomenon known as winter kill, which happens when fish suffocate from a lack of oxygen. Their bodies are on the sand and getting washed over by waves. Spiny dogfish sharks turning up dead along Jersey Shore beaches. It's not too often that you'll see that every once in a while. And there's dead dogfish everywhere for like the last mile. Keith Marnell recorded this video Sunday in Brigantine. Crazy, I know, right? The State Division of Fish and Wildlife started hearing about the dead sharks over the weekend. Conservation officers counted about 60 on Atlantic County beaches, but additional reports have since come in about the creatures washing up in Cape May and Ocean counties as well. Over the last couple of days, we've had them as far north as Island Beach State Park. Most of the fish were decomposed and decayed. So, you know, those fish were out probably at sea for a while. Why the sharks died is not known. A disturbing sight surfacing over the last 12 months. About 300 sick or dead turtles. Florida Wildlife says from the river's headwaters to Lake Apopka. Reports popping up all over the waterway since last March. Freshwater, mostly softshell turtles like these and cooter turtles mysteriously dying in mass. Puzzling scientists until something started showing up. 18 of the 
of these turtles were collected by SWC, their findings suggested a viral infection contributed to these mortalities. A virus they've never seen before, not seemingly related to any algae blooms and apparently not affecting other animals in the river, just those turtles again and again. So the answer, well, the experts are still trying to figure that out. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. The Indian military successfully shot down a satellite in low Earth orbit. According to Prime Minister Narendra Modi, India's national space program does not aim to trigger an arms race, but will allow the country to enter the list of space powers along with the United States, Russia and China, countries that are also capable of shooting down satellites in orbit. I would like to assure the world community that our new opportunities are not directed against anyone. This is India's fast-growing defense initiative. India has always opposed the arms race in space, and our position does not change. Days after the delivery of two Russian military planes to Karaka started a media firestorm, reports now say that the personnel and equipment were involved in opening a training center for military helicopter pilots in Venezuela. In a statement, Russia's state corporation for arms sales said that Russian organizations remain committed to deepening cooperation with government agencies in Venezuela. Following the news of Russia's presence in the country, the United States has demanded that it come to an end, with Special Envoy Elliot Abrams claiming that the U.S. has options and it would be a mistake for the Russians to think that they have a free hand. A 70-year-old woman was punched while praying at a church on the Upper East Side. Police say her attacker was caught on surveillance video. This is the woman they want to find. The attack happened Wednesday morning as the victim was praying at St. Monica's Church on East 79th Street. Police say the woman told the victim to shut up, then punched her. Investigators say the suspect is known to frequent the area. Health officials in Rockland County have declared a state of emergency to deal with a measles outbreak. This is a public health crisis and it is time to sound the alarm and take the appropriate action. Anyone under 18 years of age who has not received the MMR vaccine against the disease will be barred from entering public spaces for 30 days or until they receive the vaccination. 153 cases of the highly contagious virus have been reported in Rockland County since October, mostly in an Orthodox Jewish community. New York State currently allows religious exemptions for the measles vaccine. I think something needs to be done, but just to say, you know, we got to ban everybody and underage and things like that, I don't see that doing more good than hurting. If it's going to cause an epidemic, you have to follow the rules. It's unclear how the temporary declaration will be enforced. Officials say violating it could mean a $500 fine and six months in jail. People who identify as gender non-binary can now book flights under that designation on United Airlines. That change just came today, making United the first airline to offer this option. People who identify as non-binary don't see themselves as just masculine or just feminine. United says it worked with LGBT rights organizations to create the changes. That included learning how to phrase things to be more welcoming. Brian, there's new research that is shining a light on the pressures from our pastors, that the pressures that they face from the pulpit. The study finds half of American Christian pastors worry about preaching on hot button issues, concerned that they might offend someone. 69% say they do feel pressure to discuss controversial topics, while 64% feel limited by their ability to do so. I agree. Uh, yes, there is some pressure, but uh, in the end, you have to decide are you going to please God and obey His word, or are you going to please people? We address the issues. Uh, I mean, our job as pastors and preachers is to communicate God's word, communicate the truth. Uh, the gospel that we preach is not at all is not always a comfortable a message, and so we have to preach it and declare it regardless of how people may feel. Mm -hmm. The reason morality has gone out of the window is because the pulpits, and I lay the blame on the pulpits and mm -hmm. the preachers, have ceased to preach the truth. Welcome to CBS This Morning. We're talking about one of the great symbols of Paris and all of Western civilization. It is still standing this morning after a fire that nearly destroyed it. 
Flames brought down the spire and much of the roof at Notre Dame Cathedral yesterday. And think about this, it's the start of Holy Week. Mm -hmm. This morning, the fire is out and prayers and offers of help are coming in from all around the world. The cathedral's main altar is covered in debris right now, but much of the historic interior appears to be okay, and that's great news. The fire started during a major renovation project. As vicious flames engulfed the 850-year-old masterpiece of Gothic architecture, France's president said a part of us is burning. The fire broke out in the attic around 6.50 local time, about five minutes after Notre Dame closed for the day. It spread to the roof at the rear of the cathedral. In less than an hour, flames spread to its giant spire, which just 13 minutes later collapsed. 400 firefighters battled, but at times appeared dwarfed by the fire, which tore through the soaring structure, fueled by the wood of 1,300 oak trees that made up part of an interior network of wooden beams. Dropping heavy water from the air was not an option for fear it had caused the entire structure to collapse. Two thirds of the roof was ravaged, but medieval stonemasons may have saved Notre Dame by doing such a good job on the buttresses that survived the fire. There was a rush to save artwork and artifacts. Paris's mayor said the holy crown of thorns and other precious pieces had been successfully recovered. Today we're getting our first look inside, where the cross on the altar appears to shine amid the devastation. He is despised and rejected of men, and men of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God inflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. But God commandeth his love toward us in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son, and believeth on him, may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Hundreds more injured in explosions at churches and hotels in Sri Lanka, according to the authorities there. Dozens died in blast during Easter services at churches in Nagumbo and the eastern city of Batakolo. In Colombo, worshippers were targeted at St. Anthony's Shrine. Three of the city's major hotels were also hit, the Kingsbury, the Cinnamon Grand and the Shangri-La. A short time later, there are explosions at another smaller hotel and in a private house. Well, Britain's High Commissioner to Sri Lanka said some Britons were among those caught in the blasts. We're following a developing situation in Sri Lanka. There are reports of another explosion happening really less than a half hour ago. All this comes as the death toll continues to rise in the bombings that happened on Easter Sunday. Several Americans are said to be among the dead. More than 290 people were killed in the attacks that happened at churches and hotels. Sri Lanka's police say 24 suspects have been arrested in connection with the bombings. We want to turn back to Sri Lanka now. Liz Palmer is available to talk to us. The death toll there is rising. ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attacks, but there's no evidence of that just yet. Liz is in the capital of Colombo. Um, she joins us shortly, but take a look at her report first. This is security camera video obtained by local media. They say it shows the bomber with his backpack pausing to pat a child as he approached St. Sebastian Church. He enters by a side door, walks between the pews, and moments later commits mass murder. 
In an instant, more than a hundred worshippers lay dying or dead. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Normal 3D printers work by melting thin layers of plastic to create solid objects, but it's hard to get intricate designs to hold their form. But design engineers at Cal and Lawrence Livermore Lab got the idea of making 3D objects the way a CT scan creates a 3D image by hitting a patient with x-rays from many different directions. It's called volumetric printing. Rotating images of an object are beamed through a conventional video projector. The light is focused on a slowly rotating cylinder of gooey resin containing plastic molecules with a light-sensitive activator. As light accumulates in desired areas, the gel begins to harden, and in about 30 seconds, a solid 3D object is created, not in layers, but all at once. Right now, the objects are rudimentary, but the technique opens a world of possibilities. It can create objects inside of other objects, or in this case, a handle around a metal screwdriver. But they're even imagining ways to use volumetric printing to arrange human cells into living organs, such as livers or kidneys. The labs hold the patent and are already discussing licensing the technology to the manufacturing industry as a new way to mass-produce high-quality plastic products in the future. They shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. That Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. What must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. But the day of the Lord will come.
God is a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting, and drunkenness, and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For as a snare shall it come on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is athirst, Come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely.